Hey! Nice, this brings me now to my talk. So hi, I'm Mattis. Um, you can approach me and I will talk to you about type checking and doing that on a type level because C++ has quite some powerful types. So um, first things first, what is actually a type? Well, a type is some thing, a T. In C++ it's, a, it's, it's a, probably a type name T, okay? And we can actually do an arbitrary amount of computations with types. For example, here we have a projection where we just assume that T is some kind of type that provides us with this um, first T type thingy, which is usually present in std pair, for example. And now we can make our life a bit easier. We don't want to write type name every time, so we use meta functions. And meta functions can be also used to, again, do computations with types. So we want to implement a type checker on the type level. To do that, we need a language. Here is a simple expression language, which has natural numbers as, con as constants and variables. We also have assignments and comparisons, etc., etc. Okay, now types are realized simply as types, because we, we are working with types, okay? And um, we also need a fail type, because it can happen that the user might program some ill-formed uh, program. For example, we, if, if he or she wants to add a Boolean value to an integer value, then we should fail. Okay, now expressions are similarly um, written down. Um, constants, basically just an integral constant in the parameter list, et cetera, et cetera. For binary operators, uh, binary expressions, we have an enum class containing um, all the operators that we have, plus, minus, and equals. And for variables, again, we also need an integral constant, which this time needs to be different because we need to distinguish usual constants, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, anyhow, let's get to the flash. Here is an inference rule. So if we know that some n is integer, then this rule tells us that we can conclude, okay, this must have the type integer. And we can implement this with an ordinary function without any kind of definition. Um, so here, elab takes some constant, as we have defined earlier, and tells us, okay, if we get this, then this should type to int. And we can run our type checking algorithm by simply invoking decal, decal type and then do a mock-up call of um, this chain of functions. And now, let's proceed with some more interesting rules. So here for the variable, we need also this gamma, which is the typing environment, where we have basically a mapping from, well, variable names to their types. And now, we also need to propagate this typing environment through the whole um, elaboration calls. So, in order to implement our typing environment, we need a list of types. And to have a list of, and a list of types is only useful if we can, of course, change the size and also can find elements in it. And now, our model is that if, I, if x is contained in gamma and has the type integer, then we model this as a list that contains a pair where the first thing is the identifier that is associated with x and the second thing is simply the type. So beforehand, we had this um, elab function which got this constant and gave us the integer, but now we need to change it to give us a pair consisting of the environment and the type. Pretty simple in that case. Now let's take a look at, the, uh, at this beast again. So intuitively, we want to look up the variable in the environment. So we need some kind of function that goes through the list and gives us back whether we can find the type or not. And if we can find the type or not, then we want to actually get the type, at least if we can find it, of course. In order to do that, we need a struct, because otherwise we get into compile time errors due to eager evaluation. And this struct can look like that. In the false case, so if this variable is not in the typing environment, then we just say, oh, well, we cannot handle three variables. And in the true case, we simply grab the type from the environment, get the actual type from the pair, and give it back. And that's about it. You can find the code on the GoPod link and um, hack a bit on it. For example, implement functions or allow free variables and deduce the type from that, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you.